Good morning, good afternoon, guys. We are back for another subplot. Finally, this show just gets the, um, I don't know. Yeah, it, 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 it's been a little while. Yeah. Uh, you know, holidays, family stuff, you know. And there's always something. There, there is always something. Um, but anyway, we're here now. So, we are. Uh, we are here to talk about... We're here with a very special episode. Yeah, special because I love these Mecha are Godzilla. both great movies. <laughs> I, I would say these are arguably two of the best yeah. in the Millennium series. Um, there are only like two that I really don't hold in high regard in the Millennium series. These two are. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we let's just jump right into it. Yeah. So today we're talking about Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla from two thousand three, two thousand two. My mistake. <laughs> and Godzilla Tokyo SOS from two thousand three. So both of the so these movies are see well one is a direct sequel to the 1954 movie mm-hmm. and then one is a direct sequel to the the direct sequel right uh, I don't know if there's a good way to word that but uh, <laughs> so <clears throat> the basic plot is uh, they got another Godzilla appears and attacks in 1999 and they try to kill it nothing works it wades back off into the sea and uh, a discovery is made the original godzilla bones so the japanese self-defense force decides that to recruit a whole team of scientists that can create some a weapon that will kill this godzilla so they make uh, a mecha godzilla using the bones of the original godzilla and they use dna computers to help it move and everything um and yeah, like and that's that's the basic plot of it. And then there's a couple epic fights between it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, let's let's talk about it. What do you think of Godzilla against Mechagodzilla? So, I mean, I guess I had time since we kind of pushed it off a couple of days, but I initially didn't rewatch this one because I had recently watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you. So you I'm going to be a little spacey. I, yeah, I'll watch a little it. spacey on on everything but um i really enjoy this one um i love the whole idea that it's like a direct sequel to the original Mm -hmm. godzilla um and it you know it's kind of futuristic or kind of unrealistic as well oh yeah all these movies yeah yeah um but yeah i I just love that you know they make mecha godzilla out of original godzilla skeleton some cool shots with that, like seeing the skeleton a little bit. And there's also another cool shot when the um, when the spirit of the original Godzilla mm. takes over Mecha Godzilla and goes on a rampage in I think it's I think it's Tokyo. I'm pretty sure it's Tokyo. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, when Godzilla comes ashore and they do their first test run and drop Mecha Godzilla in to fight him, and Godzilla roars and the whole system goes haywire. And then it Basically attacks the, <laughs> yeah, it attacks the um, the airships that drop him, and then like there there's an awesome shot where like you see the arm and it's covering the face, and when it comes down, the eyes are red instead mm. of yellow, and it lets out this huge roar and just starts firing missiles everywhere into buildings, and I was like, wow, that is yeah. awesome. I I think I just really like the feel of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the characters aren't even boring. Yeah, no, there's this a lot of good of the, characters. Yeah, this is one of the good characters, I think. Yeah, you get uh, you get our strong female lead, Akane, uh, who's the pilot, um, and we get. I mean, like there's there's a couple there's a couple really good scenes with her and the the desperate dad mm-hmm. who's trying to like get with her for some reason. Yeah. Uh, but like uh, they they all develop a, a kind of relationship and. Um, yeah, so they, they equip Mechagodzilla with all the... Like, this is the most stacked Mechagodzilla ever. Mm-hmm. Like, it just has a shit ton of different weapons on it. It's got laser cannons on its arms. It has... I don't think we... Do we see it in this one? Yeah, we see it in this one. The big Electra knife that, like... It's, like, electrically charged that he, like, stabs into Godzilla's Yeah, I think it's arm. also in, in the, yeah. the next one, too. Because Godzilla rips it out and just, like, throws it while they're battling. Yeah. Uh, the jetpack with all the missiles on it, and it has, like, 
16 different, uh, like, hatches for missiles to come out of. It's yeah. got six on the front, four on the side. Like, it's ridiculous. I can't then, remember it. This uh, mecha doesn't have uh, rocket fingers, does it? It does not. Yeah. Uh, only the original had that and the Ready Player One version. Right. Uh, and it has maser cannons in its mouth, which we see at the beginning. They use the maser cannons. And while Godzilla is immune to maser fire, it does weaken him mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, and then it has its ultimate weapon, the Absolute Zero Cannon, which anything that it hits just completely freezes yeah. it down to the core and just can shatter it. It's so cool. And we learn at the end of the movie that not even that can stop Godzilla because they use it on him and it right. does not work. Um, and Godzilla wades back off into the ocean. Well, I assume Godzilla's cold-blooded, right? Mm hmm So... <laughs> oh yeah i mean i theoretically i i feel like it it wouldn't work anyway yeah but but it's one of those like they build this ultimate weapon and they like show all the tests and everything of it but ultimately it's you, the the lesson to be learned from any of the godzilla movies is you're never going to stop him right you're never going to like there he is a curse on humanity you're never going to be able you, to take you him might poke postpone his yeah his, his inevitable destruction. destruction but you're not going to you're not going to phase him or put him down like I, like the except oxygen, for the original godzilla apparently yeah. technically because they they did kill it they did kill it and then they brought it back yeah which they screwed up <laughs> yeah. but like the fact that there was an offspring godzilla that reappeared it's like yeah. oh Oh, these are just going to keep coming, aren't could, they? Could it technically be be junior? Uh, there there is a theory that it is indeed a baby that was somehow spawned from the original Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, but they they said that it is a member of the same species. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it wouldn't be like the the character of Junior that we yeah. know, obviously, because it's not connected. But and this movie is interesting because not only is it a direct sequel to the first Godzilla movie. It's also connected to a few other Toho movies. Mm. Uh, Mothra, the original Mothra, okay. and War of the Gargantuas, which they show flashbacks of uh, when they're talking about how to stop Godzilla, and the Prime Minister is like talking about Gyra, and that they used maser cannons, or that they had to use uh, like a huge heat ray to stop Mothra, which they didn't actually stop Mothra. I don't know why they said that in the movie. Is that Mothra the one I bought on Blu-ray? Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, I watch watched, that one. I haven't watched that yeah, one yet because it's connected to this movie. Okay, I'll, um, I'll open that finally. <laughs> and that comes to even more fruition in the next movie right, because right. that movie is still in canon with these two movies. Okay, which is nice that it's connecting that, like it has that connecting tissue, but it's not really like in line with anything else. Like, mm -hmm. and that's where the continuity always gets misplaced. Is everybody goes, well, is it? So these movies are canon in it. Does that mean that the rest of these are? And they're like, no. It, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Continuity is a I've huge never, mess in these movies. Ever since we started doing this, like, I, I'm like, I'm not even going to attempt to, to try to make sense of it's any like trying, of it. It's like trying to figure out the Terminator timeline. You'll just go absolutely <laughs> I, insane. I feel like that's even about it. easier. <laughs> uh, oh, it definitely is. It definitely is, but it's on that same level of, do yeah, I really yeah. want the headache right now? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, do you have anything else to add about Godzilla against Mechagodzilla? Overall, I just love the feel of it. Yeah, this I movie. just, yeah. I think I the effects the could be cleaned up a little bit. There are a couple shots that are. It's still pretty goofy early. looking. Yeah. Yeah. It's the early 2000s, but um, there, there are only a couple shots that are kind of goofy looking. Everything else, I really like the battles. Mm -hmm. The battles are usually shot at a low angle, which is nice to give them a little bit more weight to them mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, they're all, I mean, all these movies are. At least that the suit actors are filmed in high speed, so when they play it back, they can slow it down and make it look like they're bigger than they, than right. they are. Um, but, like, the battles between the two are pretty great. Um, there, there's one scene that I always like where it's Godzilla, and they're evacuating the hospital, mm -hmm. and that army guy from Gamera 2. Right, right. It's that guy. Um, is like, getting that what last nurse and, like, the kid out of the hospital... And right there is Godzilla, and he's, like, charging up his beam as Mechagodzilla is coming down. Like, they drop him, and the jetpack ignites, and he flies in. Mm -hmm. And then he just, like, full-on, like, bombs Godzilla <laughs> and, like, 
flings him like halfway across the city. Like that's a cool shot. And yeah. then, then the whole battle ensues. Um but yeah, I this is this is definitely this is definitely one that I always recommend to people. Oh yeah. Um, I mean that's why we sat down and watched it that one yeah, time. Cause... Yeah, it's a it's a solid movie. And it has yeah, well, let's take a minute to talk about the design. Oh of yeah, Godzilla. I was going to bring that up. Uh, it's obviously one of my favorites. <laughs> um, I I always have liked Godzilla two thousand. I like the spiky fins mm-hmm. and everything, and this is very, very much has that same feel. I would, like, say, yeah, I would say that's that's one of my favorite. Oh fins. yeah. Um, and I like the dark charcoal gray, mm-hmm. almost navy bluish skin tone to it and the bright yellow eyes they won't really be able to see this on screen but like i love his uh like this little neckline yeah yeah he has like it's almost i don't want to call it frills yeah the way that the neck is it's the same way as the 2001 yeah uh and that design when they made it i'm pretty sure they were just like oh are people really gonna like this and then it just took off people like yeah we love it so they started to make more that look like that i would say this 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 might be my favorite uh, suit. It it is definitely in my top like three favorite suits. Yeah. Um, when they rele- when NECA released this, I bought it, and then SH Monster Arts re released that version, and I bought that. I pre ordered that because yeah. I was like, I'm not missing out on that because I love that. I bought that at the same time I bought the Kiyu SH Monster. Oh, let's talk about that too. Mechagodzilla is only referred to Mechagodzilla once. Right. Or as Mechagodzilla once in this movie. Yeah. He is referred to as Kiyu, which means, I believe it means dragon in Japanese. Okay, yeah. Um, but his designation is MFS-3 Kiyu. And it's it's me- mechani- me- machine fighting... Dra- like, there's a whole, like, list of things for it. But I'm like, yeah, I like Kiyu. Kiyu's cool. Like, yeah. don't, don't just call it Mechagodzilla. Let's just call it, like, right. something something cool. And Kiyu has a good ring to like, it. Like, we, we as the audience know it's Mechagodzilla. Yeah. But, like, nine times out of ten, they're not going to call it that. No. You know? No. And if it's a, if it's a weapon built by the self-defense force, you it's would gonna think it's going to have some kind of yeah. acronym or something. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> Let's talk about the design of Kiyu for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's one of the best designs of Mechagodzilla. Um, it's been a hot minute. I don't know if there's a there's a little bit of a shot here. Hey, guess what? Is that is that? It? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is Kiyu from Tokyo okay. SOS. I, I couldn't tell which one that was. This, this he didn't one has the, the jetpack thing. No, so. and he has the drill arm in this one. Oh, okay. At least in this figure. Um, uh, so this for, is the one where it's. The pur- like purple jetpack, right? Yeah, the blue jetpack. Or yeah. blue, yeah. purple. Blue. It, it's purple in some shots just because of the lighting. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I really like the design of... Uh, you have the mini of... Yeah, the that's, what I, that's yeah. what I was trying to figure out in my head. Um, I, I like the design a lot. Uh, fun fact, Ready Player One, the book, has Kiyu okay. fighting Ultraman at the end hmm. instead of the, uh, the design in Ready Player One fighting the Gundam. I like their original design. I do movie. too. I I I didn't expect Mechagodzilla to be in it at all. Right. And then it surprised me whenever it was in it, and I was like, "Oh, cool! That's awesome." I might watch it. It has nothing to do with Godzilla. I might watch that. Uh, the other Aaron has been staying with me, hence the computer over there. Oh. Um, but he's never seen Ready Player One. It's a good so movie. I like that one. Gonna... It's on HBO Max. I own it on so Blu-ray. do I. I have it on Blu-ray too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's about all I have to say about about uh, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Yeah, I mean, um, just you have anything else? To the add? only thing I I just I really like that movie. It is. It's a good movie. I mean, I've heard it. Movie. Anything with Mechagodzilla. The music I'm love. is really good too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's different than the actually. It's. It's the same composer from Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, and the theme for Godzilla is still the same. Mm. It's that, you know, the drum beats, and then it yeah. builds into it. Like, it's the same themes and everything. I love Mechagodzilla's theme, because it's very heroic and triumphant, whereas Mechagodzilla is, well, typically he's the villain. But in this, he's more of that hero. Yeah, he's, he's, he's usually, well, with the exception of the original. Yeah. 
Um, he's usually and Godzilla made... versus Kong. Yeah, well, he's made by humans. So yeah, yeah, is what I was gonna say. Yeah. So um, like he, you kind of think he's the hero, but <laughs> yeah. Or he's portrayed as the hero from the... Especially in this one. He's definitely he's definitely the hero in this, just because Godzilla is, again, evil. And they're yeah, there's not like an evil that. organization behind no. him or anything. No, it's just, just a bunch of scientists trying to trying to make a weapon. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, do we want to rate it now, or do we want to rate it after? I think we usually do both at the end, I think. That's right, yeah. I yeah, think. Do. I don't know. <laughs> so let's just move on to Godzilla Tokyo SOS. I'll let you take this one away. I'll do my best. I'm not good at synopsis. Um, if you need to read it right off the DVD, I'm gonna do let's that. go. I'm going to do that. Mechagodzilla, the super superior armed, state-of-the-art, all-robot version of Godzilla. That is unnecessary. Is undergoing repairs after his devastating battle against the world's monsters. A pain of... Psychic, oh, what? A pair. There's like a thing in the, oh. uh, yeah. A pair of psychic fairies appear and warn scientists to stop rebuilding Mech, Mech Godzilla, but their warning goes on un, unheeded. As the great robot nears com- completion, a series of mysterious incidents rock the world and awaken Godzilla, who unleashes the reign of terror against Tokyo. Mothra joins him, and Japan's desperate prime minister has no choice but to launch the unfinished Mechagodzilla. That's good enough. I'm not going to read the rest. Yeah. Yeah, so the the Mothra fairies show up, which, like I said, it's connected to the original. In fact, right. they have one of the actors, the grandfather, is from the original Mothra. Oh, okay. So, which is why he knows about, like, when when he tells him, oh, we painted the symbol on an airport runway to call Mothra to it. Like, that's part of that movie. That makes so much more sense already. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, like, he's connected through that. Yeah. Uh, so they, they show up and they tell them, they're like, hey, uh, the spirit of the original Godzilla needs to be put to rest. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Like, it's fine. And they're like, no. They're like, Mothra's going to come and kick your guys' ass if you don't put yeah. <laughs> Mechagodzilla back into the ocean. Like, you need to put the bones back where you found them. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Like, it'll be fine. And then Mothra shows up. And then they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, and it's hilarious. I mean, because enough the- of a warning would have been just them going outside. <laughs> yeah. And seeing, and seeing Mothra. Mothra on the mountain ridge there. Um I take my wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is just a taste of what you guys are yeah, get. This is just me flying. Imagine um, what I could do if I destroy shit. Exactly. <laughs> um, so Mechagodzilla loses his arm in the battle and the Absolute Zero Cannon. Completely destroyed. Yeah. So what they end up doing with Mechagodzilla is they put... Because they can't afford to do the Absolute Zero Cannon again. And it didn't work anyway, so they were like, what, what the hell's the difference? Oh well, yeah, there wouldn't be a point. Dude. Yeah. So they attach a uh, hyper maser, like a three, three, there's three hyper maser cannon things yeah. in the chest piece, along with the ones in the mouth. Um, they give them a different jet pack and everything with all the missiles and the armaments and all the laser cannons. Uh, and they're just like refitting him to go back out into battle. And uh, yeah, so Godzilla reawakens, this time with a badass scar on his chest yeah. that looks like a spider um and he uh spiderzilla yeah spider <laughs> venom he's like venom <laughs> uh and they have to mechagodzilla still isn't prepared to launch and they're like okay well should we launch it and they're like uh, i don't know so mothra shows up and they're like all right well i'm gonna go in and fight godzilla so I'd say a good portion of the movie is Mothra fighting Godzilla Mm -hmm. and the fairies praying to the egg, which then opens up and there are two Mothra larvae that also show up to the rescue. Why is it always the larva that kicks more ass? I don't know, man. (laughs) Although... I guess because it's unexpected, maybe? Adult Mothra kicked more ass in King of the Monsters than Larva did. That's true. We should have seen what the larva could do, like, in combat. Yeah. But, um, so Mothra shows up, 
and fights, and then Godzilla kills Mothra while the... Which, it, that's another cool shot. Godzilla just, like, obliterates Mothra with his heat ray, just like he did in GMK. And uh, the both the larva, like, their eyes are blue, and mm. then they turn to red, like, as soon as Mo- the adult Mothra dies, and then they go on the war path for Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so the young pilot, whose grandfather was involved in the original Mothra... Um, Gets into Mecha Godzilla after it gets damaged by Godzilla in multiple attacks mm-hmm. when it finally shows up and gets in and pilots it at least to grapple onto Godzilla after the uh, larva cocoon him in the silk. Mm. And he latches on to it to fly him off into the ocean. Well, actually, it's not even him, it's the spirit of. The original Godzilla latching on to him, and it he pilots it to fly back off into the ocean. But there's something neat that happens as he's getting ready to jump out the hatch to uh, to the plane or whatever, like to get rescued. Mm-hmm. The screen where it's like shows the pilot thing, it pops up and it says Sayonara and it says his name oh, on it. Oh, right. Like Mecha Godzilla knows. Yeah. Like the, the spirit of Godzilla knows who he is and yep. everything, which is a nice little touch yeah. that he is a conscious entity, not just a giant machine. And he's able to kind communicate. Of communicate, yeah. yeah. Um, like, and, you know, telling him that he, he knows what he's doing. Like, this, this is what needs to happen. And, yeah. And it's kind of funny that the humans don't realize it it's mecha godzilla itself that realizes it needs to put itself mm-hmm. to rest and take godzilla with it yeah so it basically sinks both of them into the ocean to presumably never be heard from again <laughs> um there is a post credit scene to this movie oh good because i didn't probably watch it uh and it's kind of odd but i they never did anything with it yeah they never did anything with it and i was like why it like pans back out and there's like DNA and stuff like that. You see like helixes and stuff and then Hmm. it zooms out and it turns like blue and it zooms out and there's this canister and all you can hear from the audio, it's like an intercom thing. And they're talking about like DNA sequencing complete Hmm. and it like zooms out and it's presumably Godzilla DNA. Yeah. Like that they're trying to replicate or something with it maybe grow their own yeah and, and so it like it yeah of. so like they never did anything with it and yeah. i was like why i was like <laughs> that would have been so cool I'm like why did nothing happen with that yeah but then we got godzilla final wars and i thought that that was gonna be somehow connected it's not yeah yeah no. i was like why did you guys <laughs> never like proceed with that plot i was like that seems so like it, i hate when they when people when studios do that yeah when they go hey this will be cool and then they go what was that and it's like oh never mind we didn't get around to do it i mean it. i guess it's a little bit different of a scenario because the movie wasn't held in high regards but like it kind of bothered me how uh godzilla american godzilla oh yeah and well then but they they did kind of continue it with the series Oh, right, two. right. I, yeah. Okay, I always forget about that because yeah. I haven't watched that. <laughs> yeah, because that actually follows the baby that hatches out okay. of the egg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Need to watch that. So, Mike, what would you think of Godzilla Tokyo SOS? I like this one. Maybe not as much as that one. Um, but I really do enjoy the, the story of we need to get Godzilla's bones back yeah. to rest. Yeah. Um, and I, did, I really didn't know Mothra was in this one. Like, you might have told me at some point, but I totally forgot. It's a nice surprise if you don't. Like, yeah. If you don't know, like and the then twi- you watch it, and you're like, oh, Mothra's here. Like, the twins cool. showed up, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I kind of wish I did know at the time that the grandfather was connected, because I, I was kind of oh, lost yeah. on it. I was like, so I guess this guy was around somewhere for something. <laughs> he He's in, a like, and he's even in Godzilla, or Mothra vs. Godzilla from 1964, mm. that same actor. I I don't know if those two are connected or not. Yeah. Because uh, it's kind of, like, sketchy, like, whether it is or not. But He doesn't uh, play the same character? I, I can't remember if he oh, plays okay. the same character, okay. but it's the same actor. And he's yeah. in a bunch of... He's in 
Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster and, like, a bunch of other ones. Okay. But, like, when I saw him, I was like, oh, it's that actor. And then I don't, like, remember if he was... Like, and I didn't watch Mothra until after I watched this. Right. So I was like, oh, that guy. I was like, yeah, that makes sense that they brought that actor in yeah. like, to to be that connecting tissue to the other movie. Even though it was already established in this movie that right. it was canonized with it. Hmm. Yeah, Mothra is a nice touch. Uh, the effects with Mothra are really good in this movie. Oh, Mothra looks great. Uh, one of my favorite scenes is in the opening where they get like the radar signature and they're like, hey, they're like, there's some something huge is... Like they're in restricted airspace. Oh, that whole that whole scene was awesome. I know, because like the planes show up, and the the effects in that are really good too. Mm-hmm. Like the way everything was shot, and like they show up and they're like, "All right, uh, land, or we will fire upon you." And there's no response, so they just like start firing on it. And I even and thought that moment. shows up like out of the fireball. I was like, yeah. "Oh my god!" Yeah, I was like, "What are you trying to? Con- you don't know what it is. No, you don't know yeah. that it has a radio." Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I was like. What the hell? <laughs> I, I well, I guess like with uh, like fighter jets and stuff like that, you have you have to at least have like try to communicate before you end up trying yeah. to shoot it down. I was just meaning like if it is a person in some sort of aircraft, mm-hmm. like who's to say they have a radio on? Oh yeah, it's <laughs> basically you know just it? to cover their ass. Yeah. Like, they're like, well, I did try to hail them before I shot them. Right, down. right. <laughs> I get that part, but I I also was like, well. Yeah, you don't know. You tried once, and you're like, ah, screw it, let's shoot it down, yeah, whatever let's it is. It. It's, it's a giant organic life form. But, but yeah, yeah I, I love that reveal, it. though, because, like, it's it's literally just a ball of, like, what it, I don't, was it smoke, dust, I don't know. Oh, it was flying under cloud cover. Yeah, just yeah. clouds. Um, but it just looked cool. It just looked like a big ball of... Yeah, just flying, like, and it was just, like, pushing all the clouds up as it went along. Yeah. And then when the wing came out, you're like, oh, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. It was a great reveal. Yeah. I, I really did like that scene. Yeah, that was a really cool reveal. Yeah, Mothra looks great. Oh, they and that, that's, shot. yeah, that's the whole opening, is, like, they, they get a, a an image, they get a satellite image right. of the wing, mm-hmm. and when they see the patterning on the wing, like, that's one right, commander's yeah. like, my God, like, and then it, yeah. the titles come up and everything and i'm like oh they know they know yeah <laughs> yeah i forgot about that part too yeah that that's a really cool uh really cool opening i have a terrible damn memory when i watch movies <laughs> once at least <laughs> no yeah this is a this this is a very fun very fun movie i uh, yeah i enjoy it quite a bit i'm uh, trying to think of what all happens and in, in what sequence but um yeah, just the fact that there was two larvae, like oh yeah, you got one, one larva. Would, <laughs> yeah, one larva would have been enough. Yeah, but, yeah, to have two. Like I guess that was just the um, the nod back to the Godzilla versus. That'd Mothra. be kind of interesting. Like if at some point, I mean, we're not gonna get something that's connected to this, obviously, at this point. But um, what if we had a movie where there was two larvae and they. And then there was two different mothers. Yeah, yeah, because like two different like designs. They turn in like yeah. two different colors or something. Because we did talk about that at one point. Uh, I think when we did Ghidorah the Three Head Monster, I mm. was like, okay, so that is canon that there's the Mothra larva, but where's the other one? Right. I'm like, there were two. Yeah. Like, shouldn't there be? Oh two yeah, there was two at, at yeah. another time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. What happened to the other one? Because yeah. they're like, oh, Mothra's fine. It's on the island. I'm like, yeah, but what happened to the other one? Did somebody poach it? Did they kill it? Like, what happened? Did yeah. one larva eat the other? <laughs> Maybe. Got hungry. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's nitpicks, but it's some stuff that's never explained. Yeah. That I'm I like, think that would be cool to see, like, two, two Mothras, you know? Yeah, yeah, that'd be, like, yeah, like, have one be its original patterning and then have one be like a, a different color i was thinking like the same thing pattern but like when you combine them it makes one big pattern uh, that'd be cool something like that yeah that'd be that'd be neat be a cool picture would be <laughs> would be a really cool picture get on that <laughs> yeah get on that toho will you um i was talking to you oh oh <laughs> me yeah get on that me um <laughs> But yeah, I uh, I 
like I said, I enjoy both these movies in conjunction with one another. And it's nice yeah. because these are actually connected I love sequels. When, I, yeah, you know, I love when there's con- actual continuity. Yeah. Continuity, yeah. Um, but yeah, having having that is nice in this ser- in, in this part of the series because mm-hmm. there's very little that are actually connected. And it's funny because we have... Uh, well, the Mechagodzilla movies are connected like they have direct sequels Mm -hmm. which is kind of weird that that's like the one thing that actually has a connecting sequel well Ghidorah does too in some cases but like Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla and then you have Terror of Mechagodzilla right right and then you have uh, you have Godzilla versus King Ghidorah and then you have Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla because they have to use that technology but then they have Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla right after, which is also connected because then they're building another weapon in Mogera. Mm. Um, but yeah, like uh, the the Mecha Godzilla seems to be that 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 key to making sequels. Yeah, you know? yeah. They're like, hey, as long as we have Mecha Godzilla, we can continue to make something similar or yeah. something like that. Very odd how they decide that. Or it is, yeah. Like, oh, we gotta. Gonna make a couple parts to this. Use yeah. Up, use up Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, we got. Hey, we built this suit. Yeah, make it work for two movies. <laughs> All right, you got it. I wonder if that is the the thinking. Like, hey, Mecha doesn't show up very often, so if we build one, we we better just make a couple movies out of it. Yeah, we better make two out of it. <clears throat> and I mean, like, you could easily set it. Like, they could have done a third. Like, and I think that's what they were trying to do was they were going to have, like, a Godzilla versus Godzilla type of thing. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Where, like, where they created another Godzilla that like, would... That they the mechanical would Godzilla kind of didn't control. work, so, yeah. here, so they were going to try to grow an organic one and see if they could sequence the DNA somehow where they could control it, yeah. and then it would fight the other Godzilla. That would have been cool. That would have been cool to it see two cool. Godzillas fight. Um, yeah, that have been, it look like the original. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that would have been really interesting. It probably would have been if they retrieved the, yeah, because they would have had to retrieve the uh, DNA off of Kiyu. so it probably would. Yeah, have they probably like would have got original. it off his bones. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, because they talked about uh, tapping into the spinal cells to make to make DNA sequence computers to control it. Right. Uh, so yeah, that would have been a cool movie. Would have been a cool movie. <laughs> We could have been talking about a trilogy if they had actually gone that way. Yeah, yeah. But. Dang it, Toho. Yeah. We did get two good movies out of it. So we, we did. We can't really complain. No no complaints. So, are we ready to rate? We're at, yeah, we're ready. All right. Um, we'll start with, obviously, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I know that with this entire series, they've all been sevens or above, but yeah, yeah. Uh, 7.5. It's just, like I said, it's one of my favorites, and I'm just putting it a little bit higher than most of the other ones, because it's, it's a good movie. Yeah. I have my complaints about it, but they're not really, they're not really worth a damn. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's just my little nitpicks, but it's, right. it's a good movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, when, he, when you've seen most, if not all, Godzilla's. You nitpick, yeah. you know, each one. Yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna find some flaw in whatever. And just yeah, you're gonna be like, "Oh, I like this and this Godzilla better than how it was portrayed in this one." Yeah, and, you know, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go seven out of ten. That's just how I feel right now. Being that I didn't watch it right now. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I I I did. Totally enjoy it, um, but as we were talking about it, I think I'm going to skip you and talk about this, because it kind of based off of that, the inclusion of Mothra and, and like all the other stuff, mm-hmm. as we talked about it, I think I might like this at this moment better, so I'm going to give this one a 7.5. Fair enough. I will bring mine to a seven on that i don't think that the inclusion of mothra muddies the story at all or anything or Mm. doesn't bog it down 
but it like I think the thing that I like about this is there's not that many monsters. Mm. It's literally just Godzilla and Mechagodzilla fighting each right. other. Uh, they don't try to like shoehorn in something else, and they're like, "Oh, there's something else. Go- something else is coming." Like, not that I don't like it. It works for that, right? Because they're connected to that movie. But it just like this is being a standalone thing. Like, with you look at like GMK. Mm-hmm. It's it's not a, it's not too many monsters. It's it's works for what you're trying to do. Megagirus has Megagirus, the Mega Nulon, the Mega Nula, Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla 2000 has the UFO, then you have the Millennium, then you have Orga. Like, there's yeah. evolutions to the monsters and everything. This just has Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, or, I, can, I can agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Like, it, Mothra. It's like, neat that you can just focus on those two. Yeah. Like, Mothra. It don't bother me that Mothra was in it because Mothra fits in perfectly. Like, oh yeah. Um, like other movies, like I'm thinking of that one with what was it, Batra, Mothra. Mm, oh yeah, Battle Battle of Earth. Yeah, like there's just too many. Like there can be too many monsters. Oh but yeah. Like three of them. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's it, not that big. It, it's deal. like it's like Spider Man three. Like. Once you have Once one you too many, 40. you're like, okay, now, yeah. now we're getting into like some territory that's gonna be like, and we we might feel that way about the next movie. Yeah, because that's, that's it's basically thing. Millennium destroy all monsters. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so oh, I thought you were talking about Spider Man. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Final Wars is what we're gonna yeah. talk about next time. Um, but but yeah, yeah. yeah so that was. Of- that was uh, <clears throat> two of the better Millennium series movies. Yeah, I, I would say these are the the best ones that we've watched. It, you know, I still think GMK memory. might be yeah might be better than these two, but they're close. Hmm. They're they're close second. Yeah, uh, in that regard, well, I'm but just a sucker for Mechagodzilla. So. <laughs> I, I'm just a sucker for the whole team that did the Gamera trilogy, so like GMK is <laughs> yeah. up there for me because it's so well done. It's such a good trilogy. Yeah, I haven't watched that since we. Yeah, you know what? Podcast. We're we're just gonna stop this and we're gonna go back and review the Gamera trilogy again. <laughs> redo. Yeah, we're gonna redo it. Yeah. But, but yeah. So uh, next time we'll be talking about another. End and beginning <laughs> to an era once yeah. more. Uh, we're going to be talking about Godzilla Final Wars, the again, another final Toho production. And then we'll be talking about Gareth Edwards' Godzilla from Legendary Pictures from right. 2014. So we're going to have we're a. At that point, huh? Yeah, we're going to have a 10 year gap in between Damn. Final Wars and Godzilla. So I, I've been personally putting off. It's been a while since I watched. The, uh, I, what's the name? Gareth. Gareth Edwards. 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 Yeah. Um, it's been a while since I've watched that one, but I've specifically been holding off because knowing that I'm going to oh, have to. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, now you got a shirt from it too. Yeah. So. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, me too. So join us next time here on Subplot, or Geek Tavern Subplot. Uh, yeah. we're, we're gonna talk about more Godzilla, and don't worry, we are getting close to the end. So if we you're are. if you're getting bored, just <laughs> stick around. <laughs> uh, so don't don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Sayonara. <laughs>